Hello, I'm Waffles Are Better. In this video, I will be showing you how to use commands and functions to make sure that something in your data pack only happens once at world start instead of having it happen every time that the data pack is loaded which is what load.mc function would do. And in this video, I am also fixing some of the errors that I made in my last structures video. So thank you guys for pointing those out in the comments. There's also a data pack download in the description that is a fixed version of the data pack that I worked on in that video. But back to this video, it's a pretty important thing for your data packs. I use it in stuff like my 10 dimensional chess data pack where I have to load structures and like place chess pieces and stuff. So you might want to use it in some of your data packs as well. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the shipwreck spawn data pack that I used in my video on how to make structures generate using structure blocks and not uh, configured structure features. Because some people pointed out in the comments of that video that I had left out some pretty important things uh, things that I left out because I thought they weren't super necessary, but uh, it turns out I was wrong about that and I didn't think about that, so I'm going to fix that in this video. First thing that I'm going to do, uh, just for clarity, is to rename the generate.mc function file. Uh, I'm just going to name it load because it's what runs when the data pack loads. Um, and then go back to the load function in the Minecraft namespace under tags. And I'm going to change this to load because that's what I just renamed the file to. So if you did not watch the shipwreck spawn tutorial, all you need to know is you need a data, Minecraft, tags, functions folder. And then inside of the functions folder, you need a load.json file. And inside of that, you need to have all of this stuff. And everything in values are the functions that the data pack will run when it loads. You also need a functions folder inside of your namespace with a MC function file that I have named load. And you need to call that in this value right here. So inside of the functions file, I'm actually going to create a new file. And I guess just call this loop.mc function. And then just for organization, I'm going to create a new file. And this one's just going to be called run underscore once dot MC function. So everything that I originally had in the generate dot MC function file, I'm going to copy. Um, so you probably won't have anything if you are just starting with this video and you haven't seen the shipwreck spawn video and that's okay. Um, everything that you want to run once on world startup, you're going to then put in the run once dot MC function uh, file. So all of these files, the MC function files can be named whatever you want, but it is important that you remember what they are called because if you go back to your data Minecraft tags functions folder, you're going to need to copy load.json and paste it and then rename it to tick and tick is just going to run whatever functions are in here on every in-game tick. So that's 20 times a second. And you're going to want to um, change the name of the file, of course, your namespace, and then the name of the file over here to the one that I named loop. This should just be whatever the name of your file is. So then you're going to want to go to the file that I called load.mc function, which is the one that is called in the load.json file. And so in here, you're going to want to type the first command, and this is going to be scoreboard objectives add, and you can name this whatever you want as long as it is under 16 characters. Uh, so I'm just going to call it spawn complete dummy. Um, and make sure that you put dummy here and that is to specify that its value will not change because of anything that happens in game. It has to be changed manually. And then you're going to want to copy this and paste it. Uh, I'm going to change this to, let's just say spawn timer. What this does is it just adds two objectives uh, to the scoreboard and this is going to be used to keep track of stuff in the data pack. And so I believe that means you are done with load.mc function. Uh, so you can save it and go on to the next file. So you're going to want to go to the loop function 
And then in here, um, the first thing you're going to want to put is execute uh, unless score. Then here you're going to make up a fake player name. So put a hashtag in front of it to make sure that it isn't a player's username. And so this is just going to check the score of some fake person. So I'm going to name mine shipwreck spawner, I guess. And then we're going to check uh, for their score spawn complete. And then we want to only execute unless their score matches one. So let me take a second to explain what all of this is doing. So in the load.mc function file, we are creating two scoreboards that are going to store some numbers that are going to help the game keep track of what's happening. So in loop, you are going to execute a command unless the score that belongs to hashtag shipwreck spawner um, under the score spawn complete matches one. So if their score is zero or it's two or it's three, then this will still execute. But if the score is one, it will not execute. So you'll see what this is really for in a minute. But going on after matches one, you're going to want to type run function and then the name of the function that I called run underscore one stop function. So that's going to be shipwreck underscore spawn. Oops, for me. So the name of your namespace and then the name of your function. So run underscore once. So all that this is going to do is 20 times a second, if shipwreck spawner does not have the score one in the score of spawn complete, so if spawn complete does not equal one, it is going to run this function. So now we have to go on to run once.mc function, and this is where the scoreboard is going to be used. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is do, um, scoreboard players set and then just go back to loop.mc function copy this fake name that you put so for me that's hashtag shipwreck spawner um so scoreboard players set the fake player name and then the name of your scoreboard so spawn complete one so this makes it so at the end of this function it will set the shipwreck spawner spawn complete score to one, which means that this will no longer execute 20 times a second. So that already makes it so that um, this will only happen once. So everything in this file will only happen in the first tick of the game. So the main problem that I had before the error that I made in the last video is that I was running everything on the load.json, and that means that every time the world was opened, it would run the function again. And that is a problem because if you have something like a structure that you want people to interact with where they can break things, that structure will then regenerate every time the world is started. So using this setup that I just made, that... Uh, only runs if this score is not one and then sets that score to one at the end of the function makes sure that this entire function only runs the first time the world is started so that is good enough to solve that problem but it isn't actually good enough to solve all of the problems in the first video that i made the second main problem was that all of these happen in one tick so the force load happens to make sure that these set block commands work properly because that way they will be in loaded chunks so it will actually set the block. However, someone pointed out in the comments of that video that if the force load happens in the same tick as this happening, that means that the world will not have time to load the area that the structure block is loading into, so that means neither of these will actually happen. So the way to fix that is with this timer scoreboard that I made at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to use this same fake player. So what I'm going to do is make it so this run once function runs for the first, I don't know, 
half a second or so of the data pack being loaded and then this command is activated which makes it not run anymore so basically i'm going to make all of these commands in this function staggered so you'll see what i'm going to do in a second the first thing i'm going to do is add scoreboard players add and then uh the fake player spawn timer one so what this command will do is every time that this function is activated, it will add one to the shipwreck spawner's timer. And so that means uh, since this will run 20 times a second, if this function runs for all of the ticks in that second, the score will be 20 at the end of the second. So then after that, all you have to do is make it so all of these commands are going to run at a different tick in that second. So to do that, all you have to do is change all of these commands to execute if score. So that's going to be execute if score and then the fake player spawn timer matches one. So um, and then run and then the rest of the command that was already there. So what the execute if score will do is make it so um, whenever the spawn timer matches exactly one, so that will be in the first tick of the data pack being loaded, it will set the world spawn to these coordinates. And then if I copy this command again and paste it here, I'm just going to keep this number as one. So the set world spawn and force load commands will both run in the same tick. And so that means that way, the instant that the pack is loaded, it will set the world spawn to this point and it will start a force load. So I'm going to give, uh, I'm gonna be generous and give the game a whole half a second to be able to generate this structure. So I'm going to copy and paste the command again. So execute if score, shipwreck spawner, spawn timer matches one, run set block, out of that coordinates, except instead of one, I'm going to change this to 10. So that means in nine ticks after the force load command, it will run this set block command. So I'm going to copy this again and paste it again. Basically what we've got here is two different timings. So at the beginning of the world, it will set the world spawn and create a force load. And then 10 ticks afterward, it will create the structure that the data pack is meant to be used for. Of course, if you're not using this for structures, you would have different commands here, but it's still the same um, execute if score command for anything that you want to use this for. And then I'm just going to copy this command um, and then paste it down here. And I'm going to change this force load add to force load remove and then set the time to, I don't know, 20 ticks. So after a second, it will remove the force load, which means that that area will no longer be force loaded. So that will remove any potential lag that this could have caused by having too much of the world loaded at the same time. And then again, just going to copy this execute if score hashtag shipwreck spawner spawn timer matches 20 run going to paste that at the beginning of the command that will make this function stop running. If all of that is pretty hard to understand, let me give a little bit of a summary. In the load.mc function, the first time that the data pack is loaded, it will add these two scoreboards, which the game is going to use to store certain numbers. In the loop.mc function, every time that this number matches one, it's going to run this function. And then in that function that it's running, it is going to add one to this number every 20th of a second. So after 20 times, which will be one second because it adds it 20 times a second, it's then going to set this number to one. And since that number is one in the load function, or sorry, in the loop function, it's going to stop running the run underscore once function, which means that um, this function will never run again in the world. So basically this function will run for the first second and then never run again. So I'm going to create a world and you should see when the world loads um, that the shipwreck that is at the spawn actually won't generate until about 
half a second after I start the world that might not be visible because of um, the direction I'm facing, but I'm going to try to catch that on camera. Let me see. Yep, there we go. So it doesn't generate instantaneously, but you could actually see it generate about half a second after the world started. And so that can clear up any problems that might happen because of the shipwreck trying to generate in non-loaded chunks. So I can actually do slash scoreboard players list um, and then what was it? Hashtag shipwreck spawner. And you can see that the spawn timer has stopped at 20 and spawn complete is set to one. So the reason that spawn timer stopped at 20 is it added one to this count every tick for 20 ticks. And then once it reached 20 ticks, it set spawn complete to one, which made it stop adding numbers to the spawn timer. So sorry guys that I forgot to add this in the last video. I thought that it wasn't necessary, but um, that was my fault. And thank you guys for pointing that out in the comments. If you guys want me to do a video on how these functions and commands can be used to create some kind of timer or something, let me know in the comments. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video or any suggestions for things that you want me to cover in future videos, as I just said, you can give me those in the comments or you can join my Discord server and talk to me there as well. I really appreciate you guys uh, pointing out the problems in my last video on this subject because it helped me solve them and help you guys a bit more. And again, I'm really sorry that I didn't catch those before I posted the video. I'd also like to thank you guys for 550 subscribers. I just got 500 subscribers like a week ago and it just blows my mind that I already have 550 subscribers now. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.